Okay. Um, yes, so welcome back to the uh, second lecture on electroequations. Um, basically, let's start with a brief recap of the main points from yesterday. Um, so we had the, a look at the electric Lagrangian before and after symmetry break, and basically um, we discussed a little bit how the um, breaking of the SU2 cross U1 into the remaining U1 QED um, is basically just hiding the symmetry that was originally there and is at the same time generating all the mass terms and um, with these dynamically generated mass terms all of the at least apparent parameters in the electric sector and at that point basically there comes the the main takeaway point that here we have to distinguish between independent input parameters and derived parameters that really just take the role of um, shorthand notations for combinations of input parameters. So, um, so to speak, these derived parameters, they vanish completely from the Lagrangian and really just um, get replaced by some combination of input parameters um, um, that they are defined by. <clears throat> so in that sense, there's a couple of, um, I do have some choices which ones I choose to be input parameters and these choices depend basically of what I want my calculation to accomplish or what I would want to be um, want to have done with it. And of course the major um, consequence of that is that not all parameters of the standard model can be determined independently. They have um, relations between them and of course um, checking these, these relations is important as well. Right. The second major point from, from yesterday's le lecture I'd like to bring back to your attention is that um, higher order electric corrections or higher order corrections in general are not that determined by um, adding a certain class of particles or adding a certain class of loops, but rather are determined by um, calculating all contributions that um, contribute to a given signature, meaning um, different combination of uh, the, 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 the desired combination of uh, final state particles and by its order in the expansion in alpha S and alpha. <clears throat> so um, at NLO QCD, I basically have to um, take into account all contributions that add one additional power in alpha S with respect to the respective bond process um, that I define or for the next leading on electric correction, this would be all contributions with an additional power of alpha. So, and this is basically the de de definition and nothing else. And in particular, we have seen that there are electric corrections um, or contributions to electric corrections that may not involve adding any electric particle whatsoever, but rather um, adding an additional gluon um, with respect to a, a different um, heating order process. Okay, um, the very last point um, I'd like to recall from yesterday is um, the definition of infrared safe observables. And as John also alluded into his lecture earlier this morning, um, this picture, for example, um, a dressed lepton is not by accident reminiscent of a jet. It's um, really just the very same thing, just with um, um, different objects and um, the whole concept of um, infrared safety um, ext when extended to the electric sector is really basing on the same ideas as in the QCD sector that I have to, that an observable has to be insensitive to an addition of um, radiation of um, soft or collinear um, massless quanta. <clears throat> um, again, the big problem here as opposed to QCD is now that all standard model, par model particles are involved and um, if I want to do anything but jets I need to be careful how exactly I define my flavors in an infrared safe way and some simplified solutions exist um, but in general fragmentation functions are the safe choice. <clears throat> okay so so much for what we um, talked about yesterday. Today, um, I'll rather give you an overview of um, what kind of impact the uh, electric sector of the standard model has on um, different classes of 
um, observables or input quantities. And uh, we'll first have a look at um, fixed order calculations and have a look at what, uh, what next to leading order electric um, corrections look like and um, at some point even higher um, order corrections. Um, then we'll go basically into the resummation corner and look at electric PDFs and parton showers. Um, and lastly, building on that, we'll go into the um, uh, topic of how to incorporate electric corrections into event generators that um, the experimentalists among you can then readily use in um, your analysis. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with the fixed order aspects of higher order electric corrections. Um, You've probably heard of, of uh, the, uh, the NLO QCD revolution, where about 10 years ago, um, next leading order QCD corrections have been automated. And since then, they're basically available for any process that we desire um, with the press of a button. Um, the same is true now for, for electric corrections, say for complications that we discussed yesterday with respect of um, defining what actually are good observables to be calculated. But um, as a computational framework, uh, again, they're basically available with the push of the button. It, um, th these frameworks basically for, follow the same principles as the ones for, for um, next to linear order QCD um, automation. So they um, they work on, on the basis of um, um, infrared subtraction schemes um, to, to make finite cross sections at the various orders and so on and so forth. So on the one hand side, we've got the Monte Carlo frameworks that do basically the, the uh, born and real emission matrix element, the infrastructure subtraction, the phase-based generation and process coordination. And there's basically two main tools and to develop them took a little bit longer than just to automate the, the virtual corrections, which are really just loop matrix elements and um, the corresponding renormalization. It's not that this is exactly an easy task as well, but um, the main problem when deriving the Monte Carlo frameworks is, is exactly the topic of um, building things such that uh, um, the calculation of observables is infrared safe. And as we discussed yesterday, this is not quite a trivial topic. Um, <clears throat> so this is nothing that a loop a loop provider will have to concern themselves with. So um, in that sense, there's, there's, there has been a bit of a lag um, in the publication of these, these frameworks and um, the publication of the automated loops. Nonetheless, for a couple of years now, they're um, freely available and um, have been heavily used to calculate electric corrections to basically all the processes um, by now that um, are of interest at the LHC. And if, there, if something new comes up, we can basically readily use them. Um, there's one um, um, caveat to that. And that is basically that um, for the processes of interest, there's normally only a limited set of particles that are in them that um, um, are QCD particles that interact um, um, with a strong interaction. So higher order QCD corrections are a lot easier to calculate. For example, if you think about processes like vector boson scattering or so, um, you would have only two, um, well, it, well it's, a, it's, it's in total a two to six um, process at least, and only four of these eight external particles are interacting strongly. So if I calculate next to linear order QCD corrections to them, it's a much simpler task than um, next to linear order electric correction since um, except for the gluon, every particle of the standard, standard model interacts um, um, electrically. And therefore um, the types of loops that you will get um, have much more um, are, are much more involved. So for example, if I talk about this VBS uh, vector boson scattering approach, then typically it, for the NLO QCD calculations, I would have something like triangles or, um, well, not for this process, but for similar process, kind of boxes or something like that. Um, but for the um, electric corrections, I suddenly have eight point functions. 
and um, that's um, to some extent quite a bottleneck in terms of um, calculations of the loops. The same goes for the real emission processes. Very easy since since most of the particles are um, um, like, uh, electromagnetically charged, emitting an additional photon um, from any of the external particles um, is possible and is, is a contribution to the real corrections um, and therefore um, needs to be taken into account. And this for, for, for the complicated processes really is just um, an explosion of the um, number of contributions that have to be calculated, um, which typically for, for at least most of the processes of interest is well under control for, for, for or much more under control for the analog QCD calculations. So, um, in general, just an ex as an example, um, for, for say W plus jets production, we know the QCD corrections for up to five jets, whereas we know the electric corrections for only for up to three jets. Um, and that is basically not a, not a question of methods so much. It's more of a question of how much CPU time um, do we actually have available to calculate these, these things. Right. <clears throat> so, um, so much to say about the general frameworks. Let's now have a look at, at the typical effects of higher order electric corrections. Um, and let me start here with one of the earliest calculations for 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 the uh, for LHC processes or observables, and this is the PT of the W. So in essence, it's the electric corrections to um, PP to goes to, to W plus jet. Um, in these early calculations, the W is, is basically um, considered to be a stable particle, um, but um, for this type of, observ of of observable, this is a rather um, good approximation. And what we can see here is basically the W plus and W minus, and we see um, the complete next to leading order um, calculation, and we see it's um, next to leading log and next to next to leading log um, approximations, basically just to, to, to validate that these, these are fine. Um, and we see an approximate next to next to leading order electroweak a calculation, which consists basically of the next to leading order plus um, um, the next to next to leading order piece approximated by basically just taking the, the logarithmic part of that and um, squaring that, which um, follows the same exponentiation law as, for example, the Sudakov logarithms do in the parton shower. So if you um, think back of the parton shower lecture, so that this basically goes into the same direction and gives you a, a valid next to next to leading order. Um, approximation. So, but um, how do they basically affect our cross sections? Um, <clears throat> so here, over here um, in the panels, you see the relative corrections with, with, with respect to the leading order ones, or the ones without um, higher order electric corrections. And what you see for very low um, PTs of the W for um, basically for for um, something that, that's um, of the order of the W mass itself, um, the corrections are very small. And this is in line with, with what I mentioned yesterday, that um, if you choose an appropriate renormalization scheme, the inclusive electric corrections are in the range of a few percent. But as the momentum transfer in the process grows and the PT of the W grows, um, the um, electric correction go logarithmically, and these are the so-called Sudikov logarithms, and um, they can easily re reach something like uh, minus 30% at TV. Um, this logarithmic type of um, correction is basically um, a consequence of the broken nature of the, the um, electric standard model, but I'll have a few more words on those a little bit later. Um, for now, it's sufficient to say that since they're a good approximation for the for, for the um, um, for the complete um, next to leading order calculation, um, I expect them also to be a good um, approximation for the next to next to leading order one, and they do have a property that they exponentiate. So, um, the in that sense, the next to leading order result is 
a bit of a, um, a lower bound for how long, how big they are, because in the end, um, if these are pseudocov logarithms, they exponentiate and it's a negative correction. So the next term in the exp exponent uh, exponentiation will be a positive one, albeit much smaller. So um, the say all orders type of electric corrections is a little bit smaller than the next to leading order um, approximation will tell you in general. And um, nonetheless, even at, at next to next to leading order, and um, we will have a correction that is still around minus 25% at the TeV, and there's maybe a 10% difference at 2 TeV. Um, but again, um, if I continue this exponentiation for the third order term, that will be negative again. And so it will lie in between um, these two lines here. The picture for the W minus is very, very similar. Um, basically, since these two processes are related just by uh, charge conjugation. There are minor differences that come from the PDFs, but otherwise um, it's very, very similar. Okay. Um, so much for the, for the general structure of the next to leading order electric correction, especially if you go to the regime with large momentum transfers. Um, but this is not all electric corrections have to offer. Um, another effect they can have is they can distort your spectra. And something you observe if you if you, for example, calculate diphoton production. So this is a background to to Higgs measurements. Um, basically the continuum background. It's just proton, proton goes to um, um, a pair of photons and I look into the diphoton invariant mass spectrum. I will see that my electric corrections are now positive. Um, I'm not in the sort of regime yet. So that's, that's completely um, um, in line with what we discussed earlier. So that they're positive in the range of a few percent, but I will get some small peak like enhancement at around 160 GeV. And well, in the past, maybe <laughs> um, most of you will not remember, but, but um, there have been smaller excesses that have been uh, launching a thousand papers um, the other way. So these excesses um, are something to expect from higher order electric corrections because exactly um, they are induced by the masses that come into play. So at leading order, basically I would have a diagram like this, just a quark, um, quark line that emits um, two photons. At next to leading order electroweak, I suddenly get a W loop. And when this W loop goes on shell, um, I um, produce um, a sort of almost resonance-like structure. And you may uh, remember similar effects basically in the Higgs sector um, when um, um, the top quark loop in the gluon fusion to Higgs um, can go on shell. Um, the same thing happens here and you get a peak-like enhancement. So something like that is part of the electric standard model. This is not new physics and it should definitely be part of any data-driven background fit um, that is used to um, describe the background to, for, for, for basically Higgs measurements. <clears throat> so um, a simple logarithmic fit won't do. It will have some um, non-trivial shape to it. In general, this is uh, not all the electric, electric sector can do, produce peaks or humps or whatever you like to call them. Um, similarly, it can produce edges or thresholds um, for the very same reasons. There's massive particles um, that um, get added in, in loops at higher orders and um, they can produce um, these kinds of structures when they um, cross a threshold and can um, be an approximately on-shell intermediate state. Okay. <clears throat> Last thing, um, I've talked earlier about vector boson scattering. Let's have a look at this rather recent and rather state of the art um, vector boson scattering calculation, this time for, for same sign W plus um, production. And um, as we discussed yesterday for, 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 for some processes, and this is one of them, there's multiple contributions at, at leading order already um, here at um, order alpha 
s to the 2, alpha to the 4, alpha s to the 1, alpha to the 5, and alpha, s, uh, alpha to the 6. Um, that's already at leading order. And next to leading order, we've got um, four of them, basically the same as in the diagram um, we discussed yesterday. So all these contributions have to be taken into account at leading order and next to leading order. And what you can see here is um, that the electroweak corrections are quite substantial, or the, the full next leading order corrections are quite substantial. And it turns out it's not the QCD corrections that are substantial for this process, but the electroweak ones. And the reason is that vector boson scattering in the typical uh, fiducial cuts um, always necessitates um, that some of the invariants are um, of the process are quite large as compared to the electroweak scale, and therefore we get these logarithmic and um, enhancements, um, enhancements. On the right hand side, um, the authors here have taken basically this process apart into the different contributions so we can see what's actually happening. Um, again, in the top picture, we can basically um, see what's happening at leading order. And we've, we have in blue here, so the alpha to the six leading order process, and that's the one that's dominating here. Um, the, um, the red one, that's the alpha s to the second, alpha to the four leading order process. And that is already much smaller, even though um, it has two powers of alpha replaced with a much larger value of alpha s. But um, since um, the phase space um, definition for that process um, are such that they enhance these contributions in, um, and um, the, 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 the formally leading, leading ones, um, um, this is something that can happen and um, the, the sort of um, naive power counting will give you a wrong estimate of what, what is actually happening. Um, and then of course there's the interference term as we discussed yesterday, this is an interference between two types of diagrams um, at order alpha s, alpha to the fifth. And they are not exactly negligible, they're sort of still in the percent um, area between one and 10% of the total answer. So that's the, that's the total result. And um, at next to leading order, we then have contributions from um, four different contributions, alpha to the seven, alpha S, alpha to the six, alpha S, alpha to the fifth, and alpha S to the third, alpha to the fourth. And as you can see from the magnitudes here, the alpha to the sevens, the nominally the ones with the smallest couplings um, is the largest one. It ranges from minus 5% to minus 15. And <clears throat> whereas the formerly leading one, the alpha s to the third, alpha to the fourth, um, is um, across the board something, of, um, something around 1% um, in magnitude. So it's much, much smaller. Um, one side note here at higher order electroweak, um, also photon induced processes enter. And this is for example, this um, green line here, and they can give a non -negl negligible contribution as well. Here for this process, it's on the order of, of two to 3%. So um, in that sense, um, photon induced processes are, not, um, are a consequence of higher order electroweak calculations and they're not um, completely negligible. There, um, especially when 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 jet cons uh, or when jets are part of the, the final state, um, they can form an imp an important contribution. Right. Um, as I said e earlier, in the high energy regime, um, um, the electroweak corrections are dominated by. Um, the so-called electroweak Sudokovs or the Sudokov logarithms. And this is the consequence of the broken nature of the um, um, electroweak standard model um, in the sense that um, um, W and Z bosons, they um, occur in, in our one loop corrections, so in our virtual corrections, but they're not counterbalanced by real emission corrections since the emission of real um, W and Z bosons um, mostly leads to distinguishable sig signatures. Again, this is very analysis dependent, but um, they're certainly separately finite since these bosons are massive. So I can, can consider them separately um, and 
yes, as I said, quite often they, they, they lead to distinguishable signatures and may not be part of the same sample. Therefore, following the Kinoshita Lee Nauenberg theory um, that you may remember from, from the QCD lectures, um, I will have, if the W and Z would, would be massless, I would have a leftover singularity. Since they're massive, I will have a le leftover logarithm of their mass. Typically, that's not a big deal. However, when the invariants get much larger, larger than their masses, um, these logarithms um, will become large themselves and um, will dominate the overall correction. And this is exactly what's happening here. And these are the electric Sudakov logarithms. Um, um, the, the nice thing about these logarithms is they can be constructed much, much easier, um, much more easily than um, the proper full electroweak corrections, which as, you, as we discussed earlier, might easily um, have something like six, seven, or eight point functions in them. So um, in terms of their numerical complexity, they're almost as, as cheap as leading order matrix elements. So we can, with this at hand in, in the high um, energy limit, we can easily, for example, as these people have done here, um, contribute, uh, calculate the, the approximate electric corrections to something like Z plus four jets and um, make predictions for that. Okay, so, so much for um, the fixed order picture and what electric corrections can, can um, have uh, as an impact here. Now let's have a look at the Bissam side of things and uh, let's start with the PDFs. Um, as you know, conventional PDFs are based on QCD splitting functions. So at leading order, they would have splitting functions in them, something like um, a quark fragments to a quark and a gluon, a gluon splits into two gluons or a gluon splits into, uh, into a QQBR pair. Um, <clears throat> so, with the inclusion of, of QED, that basically has been already done a, a long time ago um, and properly formalized um, about five, five years ago um, by these people here. And um, here, basically, what is added is, is um, the radiation of photons and the photon splitting in QQ bar pairs. What is, typic what is typically ne neglected are um, photon to lepton splittings. And this is justified as the photon PDF is driven by um, basically um, being generated from, from quark um, radiating or quarks radiating of photons. And um, the back reaction is pretty much suppressed in, in, in the numeric, numerical importance. Nonetheless, in principle, you would need these um, um, splittings here um, for complete consistency. Um, but as you can already see, this if you include these splittings as well, then um, you would automatically generate lepton PDFs as well. Um, and they're completely um, negligible at everything that is um, even a 100 TeV collider. Um, so we would have, if we would include this splitting, which is phenomenologically irrelevant, um, we would just have to enlarge our PDF set unnecessarily. So that's typically um, not done for that case. Um, to give you a rough size of how important the, pho the photon flux is in general, is um, it's um, not a very big effect, um, but it can be more or less important at, at um, very um, large invariant masses or very large X. Um, but in total, it's, it's not a very big effect. Um, the numbers here are slightly misleading since of course you can also, uh, the dominating effects are typically not by two photon initial states, but say a photon and a quark initial state at high X. And then it's um, of comparable size to um, say a quark gluon initial state. Um, when, when we talk about initial state photons, we have to acknowledge that there's also other source, sources of photons. Um, there are semi-classical ones. When you um, imagine your two protons are um, um, approaching the interaction point, and of course, protons are electrically charged objects. So um, there is a possibility for, for, the, elect for the electromagnetic fields of the pro two protons um, scattering off one another um, without the protons themselves um, 
uh, interacting. So that, that's basically an elastic scattering of the electromagnetic fields. So um, this can be described, that's why it's semi-classical, only um, um, in terms of um, photon-photon interactions from exactly this electromagnetic field. Um, that's, that's known as the elect uh, equivalent photon approximation. Um, the nice thing here is that the protons stay intact. And if you have a forward um, um, pot to, de to, to detect the protons, this is um, something that can be nicely done. And otherwise, since the pro proton protons are not um, broken apart, um, the detector will be relatively clear. Nonetheless, the flux is not very big for protons. Um, so it's, it's not the most important processes, but can be interesting. It's a little bit different for heavy ions since their charge is much, much larger than the proton um, than, than that of the single proton. And um, since the, the equivalent photon approximation basically goes with charge to the fourth, um, that is quite a big impact. So for heavy ions, um, the scattering of the respective electromagnetic fields of the heavy ions is an interesting effect that is, uh, can be measured and has been measured. Um, yeah. And of course, there's other um, sources of photons from the scattering of hadronic resonances. Right. But let's move on to the genuine electroweak PDFs. Um, and again, I remind you that um, the electroweak sector is chiral. Um, therefore, um, left handed fermions and right handed fermions will evolve differently since um, they will have different splitting functions associated with them. Um, in particular, in the unbroken standard model, the left-handed fermions, they will have a, a splitting function that is, um, has both the SU2 interaction in it and the U1, whereas the right-handed one will only um, be able to radiate um, um, a B gauge boson, so the gauge boson of the U1 um, theory. And this is something that um, has been investigated by these people here a couple of years ago. And um, this is something you see. So this, these plots show for the different ups, uh, for the ups and down quarks. Um, the ratio of the um, QCD plus electroweak PDF um, versus the um, QCD only PDF. And you see generally it's a reduction in flux because um, the, the driving mechanism is, um, uh, if I go back, is um, the quarks losing it, momentum by radiating off a photon or um, in the unbroken standard model radiating off our W123 bosons or um, um, the B boson. And of course, um, in, in the, dot, uh, the dashed lines, these are the right-handed ones and the solid ones are the left-handed ones and the solid ones, they radiate off much more because they have sort of the larger splitting function. Um, and that's exactly what you see here. And of course, the energy of what, at which you look is important. If you look at 100 TeV, um, the correction will be smaller than if you look at uh, 10 to the 8. So this is um, GeV, so that's an uh, effect of 10,000 more. Um, <clears throat> when I say 100 TeV here, this is the scale of the PDF of 100 TeV. Um, that doesn't mean uh, um, 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 the FCC um, will reach that scale for the PDF. And that's mainly because um, just as a comparison, um, we had the, the, the LHC at the moment with 13 TeV of center of mass energy. However, for most of our interesting processes, we do not evaluate the PDF at the scale of, um, at, at a scale Q of um, 14 TeV, but only at a scale Q of something between 20 GeV and up to something like say one, two, three TV. So that's at least a factor 10 or um, typically smaller than what we see here. Um, the interesting effect for, for the downtime quarks now or for, for the down, down quark here is now that um, for the larger scales, suddenly the, the contribution is, uh, is going up. And the reason here is that um, of course we also have the, the back reaction of some electroweak gauge boson um, going back to QQ bar pairs. And in the unbroken standard model, um, and at these scales, probably the unbroken um, standard model is, is, is a good description, um, um, requires that at uh, very high energies, um, the 
up quark distribution and the down quark distribution are the same. And since in the valence region where um, at large x, the up quark and the down quark are quite different, this uh, pulls the down quark up towards the, where the up quark is. That's different at small x where they're approximately the same. <clears throat> okay, um, last comment to make here is of course, this is these calculations and um, as uh, nice, and, nice and groundbreaking as they've been, they've been done in the unbroken standard model. And especially at small x, um, we would expect mass effects to be um, important. Um, but um, also at, at smaller Q squared that are actually accessible at, at collider scales. Um, and their mass, mass effects and the, 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 the um, um, broken standard model is a bit messier and, and will distort this sort of simplified picture here. Nonetheless, um, inspecting it is um, um, a nice way to, to look at things and, and gives us some intuition. Um, they have also calculated the PDS for the for say the transverse W boson, Z boson, and photon. And what you can see is at these very large scales, um, they're not entirely negligible. Um, say for 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 say a re reasonably reasonable-ish scale of um, 100 TV here, um, you would still have at least at large X W distributions of around 1%, um, maybe up to 10% um, at very, very large X. And of course the W plus, since it couples to the up quark is larger than the W minus, which only couples to the down quark or which, which is only radiated from the down quark. Um, <clears throat> for the same reason, um, the photon is larger than the Z boson um, since it couples directly to the to the charge of the up quark. Um, yes. Um, last but not least, we have the longitudinal gauge bosons, um, and here, of course, the Higgs boson, and they are exceedingly small since they do not couple to the light quarks, um, and they only are generated as a secondhand radiation either from from the um, W bosons or from the top quark, which itself are only generated um, um, as, as a first radiation step. So, um, so these are even at, at these um, freakishly high energies are basically negligible. Um, as a consequence, you also get charged lepton PDFs. They have a similar pattern as before and neutrino PDFs. Um, of course, there's only left-handed neutrinos here in the standard model since the right-handed neutrinos, if they were in the standard model, don't couple to anything. Um, so we can't generate them either. <clears throat> right, so they exist, they are exceedingly small and even at um, hypothetical colliders that probe the PDFs at 10 to the 8 GV, they are probably not accessible. Right, so, um, so much for the electroweak PDFs. Um, now, we can turn this whole same Dikla bit of evolution around and um, um, construct parton showers from it. And if we take a step back and talk about QED only, so the the, the, un, uh, so the, the, the uh, unbroken part of um, the electric standard model, um, the intact one, um, they've been around for, for, for decades and they basically follow the same principles as the QCD part on showers. And for that, I'd like to refer you to Stefan's lectures like last week. So all we have to do is basically add the splitting functions fermion to fermion plus photon and photon to fermion fermion bar um, as splitting functions and let them compete with the rest of the um, QCD splitting functions. However, there's one subtlety, SU3, um, <clears throat> the the edge theory of, of, of QCD um, has a property that, that um, it can be expanded in um, the large and C limit, which which means uh, which means that basically um, I neglect all the terms that come with one over n um, or one over n squared. Um, that is basically one over three squared, so one over nine, roughly a ten percent effect that I'm neglecting. And that is more or less sensible. If I were to do the same thing in, in QED, I would neglect terms that are of the order of one over one squared. And that is not entirely small. So um, 
sort of a, a similar construction pictures I mean, in, in dipoles doesn't work as well in, in, Q, in QED as it does in QCD. So um, a couple of other solutions have to be adopted um, here. And just to illustrate that the problem here, um, let's consider um, a very simple process, Dryan, um, u u bar goes to e plus e minus. So we've got u u bar goes to e plus e minus. And now I um, look at all the dipoles that this process has, and there's six of them, fourth opposite sign. That's basically the u u bar and the plus e minus dipole here. And of course the um, u e minus um, and uh, sorry, u e plus and u bar e minus dipole. Um, and then I've got the negative dipoles, so basically the, the, the same sign charged ones, and that's the u e minus and u bar e plus. And all of these dipoles, they contribute on equal footing. Since none, none of them, well, four of them actually are one over one squared suppressed, but as I said, one over one squared is not exactly a small number. Um, and these would be the ones that link initial state and final state. Um, and um, as you can see, in a phase-based picture, they're almost the same, not quite, but almost, and they will largely cancel each other, but only once all of them are sum summed up. Um, so this equal footing is really necessary. Um, and something that um, is commonly done, and <laughs> that's actually a very old re realization coming from the days before QCD was even invented, um, that's soft photon resonation. Um, what, what has been realized back then is um, I can, um, describe the coherent radiation of photons of, say, any process with any number of incoming and outgoing particles by um, basically doing a soft approximation and um, um, using this as a basis for, for resonation. And that's um, this algorithm from uh, Yeni Fochi and Sua, so the YFS algorithm, um, that basically is, is based on, on soft diconals and um, a series of hard remainders that can be used to straightforwardly do higher order corrections um, that go beyond the soft photon resonation limit. And that is um, a very neat and very precise method that um, automatically takes into account all the um, um, different contributions that come from the different dipoles since it's basically a coherent radiation from the, the multipole, which is the, the ensemble of charged particles. <clears throat> right, um, so th this one of the methods of choice that basically used it um, for, for, for um, calculating higher order QED corrections at colliders. And here we can, here we have basically a, um, something that we calculated a few years ago, um, the um, Dralian mass spectrum at the LHC. And as you can see, it's very nicely perturbatively stable since the bulk of the higher order effects is already included in the soft, uh, in the soft approximation here. And um, the higher order corrections for, for hard radiation are typically very, very small. So we know this spectrum at um, um, basically soft photon resumation plus next to next leading order QED plus next to leading order electric corrections. And um, that's, um, yeah, very stable, as I said. Um, as a short aside for E plus E minus colliders, where basically QCD is entirely absent, and, uh, at least for, for, for the interesting processes, um, this soft photon resumation has been and uh, continues to be the method of choice for um, um, calculations both at lab and at future colliders. And um, basically here is just an overview of um, the precision spectra we can um, compute for, for different um, interesting processes as the independent of the plus e minus center of mass energy. Um, something that will typically be done um, at least at a, a linear collider where you can do an easy um, um, invariant mass or threshold scan um, of the collider center of mass energy, right? <clears throat> but as before, we basically take the step forward into electric parton showers, um, now including the whole ballet of um, splitting functions in the complete electric sector. And there have been a couple of new developments this year. One of them um, is shown here. 
And the crucial bit as before is that the electric splitting functions are spin dependent. So I cannot just use my standard shower. Um, if I, if you think back to Stefan's lecture on, on uh, last week, as standard showers are spin average. So they average over the spins of all the particles. And this clearly won't, done, won't do here since I need to know whether um, a parton is left or right-handed to know whether it's able to radiate a W or not. <clears throat> And um, this is something that, that you see here. And for example, for ZZ production, and um, what you see very easily, what, what the shower nicely reproduces is exactly this um, suppression of the cross section by radiating off, um, um, by, by basically including um, um, through, through the Zudok Sudokov factors, um, W and Z um, corrections and, um, they give you exactly the suppression you would find at um, fixed order as well. Right. Okay. Um, as a last topic um, in the last few minutes, um, I'm going to show how these high order electroweak corrections can and are being included in event generators um, and are ready for use. And of course, um, what is the goal? Um, so, we do not only want to include the exact next to leading or direct weak corrections in, in the event generator, we want to do that in addition to the analog QSD ones that are already there. So we need to define an interplay. Um, but that's that's actually rather straightforward. So um, the solution is basically the same one as before. We use our standard, say, MCN and lower power techniques. And for that, for the details here, I refer you to, si to Simon's lecture last week. And structurally, that works the same. Um, there's a couple of technical dif difficulties that have to do with um, if I have an interleaved QCD plus electric or plus QCD, uh, QED shower at that point, um, the probability of the individual splitting functions to actually do the radiation um, is quite unevenly balanced between the QCD ones that come with alpha S and the electric ones that only come with alpha. Um, so they're suppressed by an additional factor of 10 or more. And um, that produces a couple of numerical challenges, but not structural ones. Um, the main problem, however, is that the electric standard model, as we've discussed, is full of uh, masses and resonances. And um, these two need to be uh, taken into account properly in these um, matching algorithms. So um, um, this goes up under the name of resonance aware matching, but um, I won't have any time to go, go into details here. Nonetheless, implementations exist even without the proper resonance treatment for um, some important processes for either single vector boson production or vector boson pair production. Um, as an example here, that's for uh, single W production. And you see here the, the um, um, electric corrections, which for the invariant mass spectrum of W, which is not exactly an observable, but um, interesting to look at. Um, it's actually mostly QED corrections. Um, so we, we have sort of a born type event that, that sits on, on, on the mass um, peak here and then radiates off photons and loses energy. And then basically the invariant mass of the leftover lepton and neutrino will sit somewhere further down here. So you, by, by QED alone, you get order one corrections to the spectrum um, somewhere below the peak. Um, how this technically works is basically sketched in the formula here. So for, for, for the power algorithm that, that the uh, authors have used here, um, what is basically done is you take the bar function, again, have a look back at uh, Simon's lecture, what this looks like for the QCD case only, and we um, add the electroweak bits into that one as well. So we add basically the electroweak virtual corrections to that one. And then we have got the, the emission bit, which is in essence um, a, a modified shower that uses um, the ratio of real emission matrix element over born matrix element as a splitting kernel. Um, and all we do is we add the electroweak real corrections to that one as well. And um, that produces us a combined Sudakov um, that will um, properly match what is in the BBAR function. So 
structurally it's it's very much the same as the QCD only shower, only that I have explicitly written in my electric contributions. So um, that's the way um, this works here. And for these processes, there's for the selective processes at least, there's um, some solutions available. <clears throat> As a last topic, um, I want to discuss a somewhat easier way to um, include higher order corrections, at least in the Sudakov limit, in the Sudakov regime, um, into, um, into event generation that is particularly suited towards um, the multi-jet merging methods that are used um, for at atlases and CMSs baseline samples. Again, how multi-jet merging works, I refer you back to, to, to uh, Simon's lecture of last week. And um, <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to construct um, an approximate method that is correct in exactly this um, electric Sudakov limit. And in practice, how that works, this time I take the MZ and all like, like approach, but this one has a big bar function as well. And um, again, I augment the QCD only version of the B bar function with electric corrections. And I put in first the exact um, virtual um, or one loop matrix element, including renormalization terms. Um, then I also include um, an integrated um, out version of the real emission correction. So I take my real emission corrections um, and I integrate over this one additional emission. And I typically cannot do this. So I will have to substitute the exact real emission correction for an approximate version of it that I can integrate. Um, but that's um, basically universally available. And if I want to, and we discussed this earlier today and yesterday, there are subleading born type contributions that may or may not be important as well. So I can include this as well. The beauty of it, all of these terms now live in the born phase space and they can simply be add, added to the B bar function. Now, um, since I've integrated out the real emission correction and I've seen here that they are important um, for some of our, um, our observables, I want to add them back in and I can add them in in, in, in a very good approximation using um, some QED final state radiation tools, either a parton shower or the, the Yenifor Chisura soft photon resummation that we just discussed. And with that, we do not have exact next to leading order electro corrections, but we have a very, very good um, stand in. And from all the tests we have done so far, this um, works not only in the Sudakov regime, there we really reproduce the exact NLO electro corrections, but um, also in the inclusive regime, it works much better than you would naively expect. So um, um, you get the two or three percent corrections um, correct almost exactly. So this is um, um, a really, really good stand in for, for the exact matching and merging. How does it work in practice? Um, so we constructed basically um, um, a TT bar multi jet merge sample. So TT bar plus zero and one jet at next to leading order, three, four, two, three, and four jet at leading order. So that's a typical sa sample Atlas um, would use. And for every next to leading order multiplicity, we replace the B bar uh, function of um, its multiplicity with. Um, the one including approximate next to leading order um, electric corrections. And for the higher order corrections, we fed them through, through a K factor. Um, and its effect on observables, you can see here, and this is um, the, the top. Um, so that's that's a reconstructed top. So it's not the top part on, but um, something like um, um, a top jet. Um, that has been reconstructed in ATV data. So it's not even the 30, 30 TV, TV data yet. It's only the ATV data. And what you can see here, even though the, the data is, is uh, pretty, has pretty large uncertainties, um, the pure QCD calculation somewhat um, has a shape towards data, at least um, for very large PT, um, something that is remedied when um, the electric corrections are in in included, as you see. Um, for small PT, the difference um, between the two is, is rather small and grows 
um, logarithmically as the PT increases. So this is exactly this um, Sudakov-like enhancement that we discussed earlier. So um, it fares rather nicely um, as compared to data, this approximation here. <clears throat> okay, then um, let me come to the end. Um, as we've seen, for inclusive observables, select recorrections are rather small um, if an appropriate scheme is chosen and um, typically they're of the order of one to 5%, give or take. However, once we go to observables that are dominated by um, large momentum transfer processes, for example, observables in, that measure some PT in the, in the, in the TV range, um, then the electric equations equations are dominated by the electric Sudakov logarithms, um, and they can easily grow as large as minus 10 or minus 50%. They're always negative. Um, so it's always a reduction of the cross section. And um, that actually plays an important role when um, you want to use these um, standard model calculation as a background to some new physics searches, because a reduction in the signal um, can have quite some or the reduction in the signal expectation can have quite some impact on um, your expected number of events. <clears throat> um, the ubiquitous uh, mass scales in the electric sector can induce bumps, edges, ki and kinks, and um, thresholds if you want, and, and so on, um, due to resonance and thresholds in the, in, that are introduced at higher order only and that are not present in the leading order. Um, um, calculation. So this, this is something to look out for and to, um, to expect and um, um, that are basically just part of the deal. So not every bump or edge or kink that appears in a distribution is, is um, a sign of new physics, but um, should be investigated properly whether it can just be induced at higher order electric. Um, with regarding to the PDFs that we discussed, photon PDFs are relevant phenomenologically. The full electric PDFs may start to become relevant at the, at the FCC, but certainly at the LHC, um, they are not. So if we talk about WPDFs at the LHC, um, if you measure something to per mil accuracy, maybe, but um, only then. Um, electric questions in, in the generator are generally available, at least in, in, in some approximation, if we talk about exact NLO electric corrections, um, we have them for um, a handful of processes, but not in a general form yet. And that has ma mainly again to do with <laughs> how many internal mass scales we have and how many resonance shape that we want to, want to um, describe correctly and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of um, additional difficulties that we do not have in the QCD sector, right. That brings me to the end. Thanks. Thank you very much, Marek, for this overview of a very complex topic. Lots of things to talk about. Uh, that's really interesting. Are there any questions right away? I don't see any hands raised or questions in the chat. Are you going to be available in the evening for any further questions? Yes, yes, I will be available tonight. So um, if you have any other questions that come up until then, find me and then we can, I'm happy to discuss them. And, uh, Perfect. So I already uh, mentioned it earlier, but maybe worth mentioning it again. The uh, recitation session tonight is a bit special because we will have a Q&A session with the folks from Define who are giving the industrial lecture. So we'll start out with this at 8 in the Kepler space, 8 p.m. Central European time. And afterwards, you can still break up and find lecturers. I, I expect this to last for at least half an hour, this Q&A session. So, Marek, if you don't, um, if, I mean, if you want to join me, of course, invite it as well. But if you don't want to, you also welcome to just join at half past eight or so. Right. I'll be there at the latest half past eight then. Okay. Cool. And then everyone can break up into rooms or just find lecturers individually and, and see whether there's still, still questions to discuss. Perfect. Cool. Thanks a lot, everyone. Then we'll take a lunch break now and see all of you back at 2 p.m. for the last session of the school.